not so long ago, we had a closer look at the Raidmax Meshian X603 case. Not a bad case at all. Looks like Raidmax can build some stuff. So for today, let's take a closer look at the Raidmax LS360 ARGB Infinita 360mm AIO. And before we talk about anything about the AIO itself, let's first head to the benchmark results. But before that, this episode is brought to you by scdkey.com. scdkey is a platform to get genuine CD keys for all sorts of games and Steam, Origin or Uplay game keys. But the most exciting aspect for us are the software keys. Do you know that pesky Windows 10 activation message that not even the engineers over at NASA managed to get rid of? Well, scdkey.com can help you with that. Look for Windows 10 Pro OEM that currently goes for just below $22. But before you buy it, make sure to use the promo code STS to get an additional 25% off and enjoy a completely message-free Windows experience. Oh, and you thought this would be exclusively for Windows 10? No. Thanks to Microsoft doing the right thing for once, you can use these Windows 10 OEM codes to activate either a Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine for its complete lifetime. If you want to learn more about scdkey.com, head over to their website or have a look at the other offers in the description below. And don't forget to use the promo code STS because using it saves you exactly one Arctic P12. Using this poor thing, we created three scenarios, a low workload at 120W, a mid to high tier workload at 250W and a god tier with good log of cooling down 360W. To get our numbers, we switch between the different modes in BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 15 minutes until the cooler reach what it can do over a very permanent time span. This is especially important for AIOs because it takes time to heat up the water. And then we gradually lower the fan speed in 10% steps while the pump is always fixed to 100% and we note down the CPU package temperature average over 2 minutes and deduct the air temperature in front of the fan to get the temperature above ambient at any given fan setting. For the noise, we position the cooler on a table and the dB meter at exactly 1 meter distance on its own tripod. Then again, pump at 100% and fan at a variable speed and measure the dBs at any given fan speed. Let's begin with the low workload. Pushing 120 watts through the socket made the Infinitar 360 keep the chip at 33.6 degrees C above ambient. Even if that isn't like the worst result, after all it's just behind the NHD15, but on the grand scheme it's the worst 360mm performance that we have tested so far. Hey, maybe the noise to performance ratio is so good it can save it. And actually, it, it's, it's not that bad. Sure, it's behind every other 360mm AIO, but at max it's not nearly as loud as any other one, except for the liquid freezer. So at 120 watts, overall performance is good on the big picture, but at the very low end of any 360mm AIO, but what if we push the heat up? At 250 watts, the Infinitar kept the CPU at 66.6 .6 degrees C above ambient, which actually makes it fall even more. And at this point, I can't even ignore anymore that there are 240mm AIOs that are outperforming it. It's, it's kind of an ouch here. On the noise to performance chart, it doesn't look much better than before. From start to finish, the Infinity LS360 was behind everything else, just a bit further away than before. But hey, at least the noise to performance ratio of the Infinita is a lot better than, for example, on the Enermax Aquafusion 240. But at 3 versus 2 fans, that isn't, yeah, that it was kind of a requirement. Pushing up the heat even more revealed that the LS360 was the first 360mm AIO to not keep the CPU below that 110 degrees C mark at full fan speed, which is kind of a bummer. At this point I would have loved to show you some nice looking b-roll shots of the box, but that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, when sending us this unit, Raidmax decided to stuff the Meshian case with the LS360, so that resulted in two things, leaving me without a box to b-roll, a weird looking stain on the bottom of the cold plate, which I can't explain, it doesn't want to go off, and oh no, three things, I have no idea how to store it later on. 
it's I, I know I have no clue where to put it. So let's skip that part and get to why I believe the performance of this thing is not as good as it could have been. The fans. On paper, they are not necessarily bad. They spin at up to 22 on RPM while it's pushing up to 69.2 CFM and with up to 3.8 millimeters of H2O. So as far as radiator fans go, the, the numbers are fine. And noise-wise, we already established that they are there are other AIOs that manage to scream a lot louder. No, the issue I have with them is air leakage. Not only are there huge gaps in between the fan frames, but the fan frame itself or the fan frames it themselves are freaking hollow. In total, there is so much gap and once it runs, you can not only feel with your finger how air is just going, getting back, no, you can even hear the, the portion of air that is jumping back through those holes. It's, instead of going through the radiator, you can hear how it, how it like slaps back in here and it, like, it, it gives like a slapping sound, like a flap. It, it's, it's weird, but you can hear how it is jumping back through the fan instead of going through the radiator. No matter where that slapping sound comes from, holes around the fan is nothing that you want if it is on top of a radiator. You want to have that thing as, as airtight as humanly possible so that every bit of air is being fully utilized by going through the radiator instead of going back. And on here, however, you lose kind of half of your potential, which then results in a reduced performance. But let's also talk a bit about the AO itself. Compatibility-wise, we are looking at AM4 and, and so on on AMD, and on Intel, it is officially LGA12, 1150, 1366, 2011, and 2066, but mine, now that's the whole reason. Mine came with the LGA1700 bracket, so I guess there has been an update, but somebody forgot to tell the website. To install the AIO, it's a bit like any other budget approach. First, we need to install the mounting bracket according to your socket on the pump combo. And then from there, it's the usual thing. Backplate and screw the thing straight into the backplate. And I don't know, the whole thing feels a bit janky, but take this with a grain of salt because the manual that you can download from the reps website right now actually features a totally different LGA1700 backplate. So I guess everything has changed by today, so uh, everything with a grain of salt. Quality-wise, I have to say the AIO didn't score any extra points either. The tubes are officially 400 millimeters long, but that's kind of a twist of reality because A, it's not really true, and B, they counted these shrinking tubes at the top and bottom, which aren't movable basically at all, so you lose that. And that the whole thing is kind of a double stretch. It's more like 350. It definitely feels like 350 millimeter. And then they are also wrapped in that cheap feeling plasticky sleeve, which is bad to begin with. And the whole thing just feels kind of flimsy as a whole. It, it definitely doesn't scream like high quality to me. Then there is the RGB, which it's okay, we got the Raid Max logo, some lights on the fans coming from the center, and then we have all of these infinity rings. Like, yeah, it, it looks okay if you like it, but again, it doesn't look like the best LED implementation I have seen, and you have definitely other budget options that look better than this. And that's kind of the overall title for the LS360. It's the performance is meh, the quality is meh, everything is meh. The only thing which is okay is the price. I can't find a price here in Europe, but in the US it's on Amazon for around 100 US dollars, which is okay. I'll, I'll give them that, but for performance I kind of expected a better result from a triple fan AIO. So overall it will do fine for a Ryzen 7, a 13700K, it will be okay. but you can get much better performing stuff at that, even at that price point. Anyway, I think this should be all for Raidmax and their LS360 Infinita. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you wanna join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. 
Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to fill these holes, because that's some wasted performance right there. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Anormax Aquafusion 240. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.